Hey guys, it's Megan. So I know that it's been a super long time, but I'm finally back with another Create This Book video. I completed four new pages for this episode, so without further ado, let's just get into it. The first page that I decided to work on this week says create cuts through layers. Acquire a newspaper or magazine. Cut a shape through several layers at once. Glue the shapes here. I was pretty stumped about what to do for this page for a while. I thought about just cutting out a bunch of triangles to make it look like a DIY notebook design that was popular a few years ago, but I decided that that was too simple. Instead, I decided to draw a fish and use magazine clippings for the scales. I sketched out a fish in the middle of the page and painted the space around it blue to look like water. While the paint was drying, I worked on the fish scales. I drew a template on a scrap piece of paper and traced it onto the magazine. Then, just like the direction said, I cut through as many layers of the magazine as possible. I could only cut through about half of the magazine at once, so I went back and cut out the rest later. Once all of the scales were cut out, I used a glue stick to attach them to the body of my fish. I started by putting the scales on the back of the fish, and then I worked my way towards the front. Obviously, these were in no particular order or color pattern, but I did try to find scales that were colorful instead of just the white page. I filled in the edges of the fish's body first, and then went back and filled in the middle. When that was done, I painted the remainder of the fish with some yellow acrylic paint. Then, I outlined the whole thing with a black Posca pen, and added a few extra details with a gold Posca pen. I decided that the page needed a little bit of something extra, so I folded a green piece that I cut out from a magazine and cut squiggly lines to make pieces that kind of look like seaweed. I arranged those on the page and then used a glue stick to attach them just like I did before. Then I used my Posca pens to add even more details, drawing bubbles and some squiggly lines to make it look more like water. So here's how the finished page turned out. I honestly really like it, and I think that it's a lot more creative than my original idea. I did forget to put the date on it though, so I'll have to go back and do that. The next page I decided to do says create a page of checkers. Put checkers here. I had originally thought of just doing a checkerboard, but again, I decided that that would be a little bit too basic. Instead, I decided to draw a bunch of different van shoes, which I guess is kind of a different kind of basic, but it's fine. Anyways, I thought about doing a checkered background too, but I decided that that would be a little bit much, so I just painted the background gray. Then I got to work filling in the shoes. This took way longer than I expected it to. I spent between 10 to 15 minutes on each of the shoes, but that's not even counting the ones where you see the people's feet or their pants. I filled in the vans using paint, micron pens, Posca pens, and my Arteza dual-ended brush markers. I'm not exactly the best at painting, so some of these look a little bit rough, but I think that you can still tell what I was going for. One of the main problems with this book is that about 80% of the art supplies that I own bleed through the paper, and I probably should have done this on a separate sheet of paper and then glued it in. The only art supplies that don't bleed through are crayons, colored pencils, and acrylic paint but if you know of any others, definitely let me know. I had originally planned on painting everything, but I decided that that was too hard and I used markers for some of them. I used a purple Posca pen for the last one to follow my rule of including something purple on every page. When the shoes were done, I filled in any of the feet or pants that were in the scene. Then, I used a toothbrush dipped in black and silver paint to make it look like they were standing on pavement. I don't think that it really worked that well, but here's what the page looked like when I was finished. The third page I worked on says create a test. Test the difference between your right and left hand. In box number one, draw something with your dominant hand, and in box number two, draw something identical with your non-dominant hand. In the first box, I drew something using my right hand, and in the second box, I used my left hand. I decided to draw the Disney characters Chip and Dale on this page, because I wanted to draw two similar things that weren't completely identical. I drew Chip with my right hand, and Dale with my left hand. 
Ironically, it took less time to do the drawing with my left hand than my right. There are probably a few different reasons for that. The first reason being that I knew that there was no way that I could make it perfect with my left hand, so I didn't really erase as much. Plus, I had already drawn Chip with my right hand, so I had a general idea of what the proportions should be. There was a little bit of space left underneath each of them, so I tried to copy their signatures in the leftover space. When the sketches were done, I moved on to the line art and coloring. Chip was pretty easy to color in because I was used to it, but Dale was a bit of a struggle. I used a micron pen for the line art, and then I used some Crayola colored pencils to color each of them in. I think that I did okay with Dale's line art. It was definitely a little bit smoother than the initial sketch, but for some reason I had a little bit of trouble coloring him in. Dale definitely has more white space left on him, and the pencil strokes are a lot more noticeable. It was a fun exercise to do though, and it went better than I expected, honestly. To finish the page, I painted the background with some Arteza acrylic paint. So here's how the finished page turned out. I accidentally wrote 7-6-2019 instead of 8-6, but other than that, I think that it turned out okay. The next page that I worked on says create a print, dip objects in paint, and press them to the paper. Use this page to test out as many different objects as possible. And then on the left page it says, choose your favorite shape from the previous page. Create a print by repeating only that shape on this page. So that's exactly what I did. I gathered up a bunch of random objects that I thought would make good stamps, and then I got to work. First, I tested out some toilet paper roll stamps. I did a plain circle first, and then I shaped it into a heart. The heart had a few gaps in the paint, so I used a small paintbrush to touch it up. Then, I shaped the toilet paper roll into a triangle, and made another stamp. Next, I used the bottom of a small plastic bottle. I've seen people do this on Pinterest to make flower shapes, and I really like the way that it looks. Then, I used the cap from the bottle. First, I used the bottom of the cap to make a smaller circle. Then, I tried using the side of the bottle cap to make a print, which was a total fail, and then I accidentally dropped the bottle cap, so we got to see what the top looks like too. After that, I used a q-tip, a straw, and a fork. I really liked the print that the fork made too. Then, I used the side of a binder clip which again I had to go back and fill in some of the details for. I tried using some embroidery thread to make string art, but I think that I was pushing the paper that was on top of it down too hard. I also tried rolling up a piece of cardboard, but that didn't really turn out like I had hoped. After that, I used a stamp that I made from one of those craft foam shapes, which turned out okay. I also used a button which I think would have worked better if I had glued it to something like a piece of cardboard first. After that, I dipped my finger into some paint to make a fingerprint, and lastly, I used some of this diamond ribbon stuff that I got from the dollar store. I decided to use the fork to make the print on the right side of the page. First, I painted the page with a darker green color. Then, I dipped the fork in light green paint till it kind of looked like blades of grass. When that dried, I tried using a technique that I saw on Pinterest to make a flower. I put some yellow paint on the page and then dragged it out using the fork. That wasn't working as well as I had wanted it to though, so I ended up just dipping the fork directly in the paint to complete the design. I kind of cheated on this one a little bit because I dipped my finger in some brown paint to make the center of the flower. Luckily, Mariah said that it's okay to bend the rules a little bit so it's all good. I also used my finger to paint the stem. To finish the page, I used a micron pen to label what each of the stamps on the left were made from, in case I decide that I want to use any of them in future projects. I also added the date with a purple Posca pen to follow my rule, and then I colored in the bottle at the bottom. So here's how the finished page turned out. It's not the best looking thing that I've ever done, but it was fun to experiment with some new materials. Make sure to let me know what items that you would use to make DIY stamps, and let me know what your favorite page was for a shout out in my next video.
So thank you guys so, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And as always, make sure to subscribe for more videos just like this one. And make sure to follow me on Instagram and TikTok. They are both at WellerMegs. And yeah, I love you guys so, so much. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye.